future. The competition in this industry is so fierce, but we did manage to get a glimpse into the future. We are gaining opinions. The obvious question is, of course, how long will this smashing success last for video games? The last line of the the GameZilla Podcast. Look, that comes one of them now. Welcome to the GameZilla Podcast, your last line of defense in major gaming news. I'm your host, Grim, and with me remotely, my buttery favorite friend, Player One Mickey, and the dickhead known as Sir Butterboy is also here. That was that was a really hurtful way to start the show. <laughs> that kind of hurt you me too. Me like your favorite buttery friend, and then you called me a dickhead. So it was, it was like a, it was an emotional tug of war, and now I'm holding back tears from your verbal abuse, Grim. You're my hero, and you're just coming on here calling me a dickhead when I haven't even done anything wrong today. I can't handle this emotional abuse. I'm not you built mean, for that. You may have not done anything wrong today. But <laughs> today. Come on, come on. Come on. I have a list of IOUs, okay? Uh, anyways, welcome to episode 338 of the Games Little Podcast, your elite free DLC for all your gaming news. And like I said, I have my, my co-host producers here, uh, Sir Butterboy, Ya Boy Butter, and player one miggy how you both doing i am great i'm great i see you know that i wasn't um you know offended during the intro you know I, i'm great my feelings are still intact somewhat butterboy has no feelings and or soul or anything so we got nothing to worry about <laughs> nope i'm strapped in for another hour and 15 minutes of emotional torture uh you know another another yeah. week another another night of abuse i'm ready for That's it right. all right well before we get this abuse rolling let's uh, let's thank all of our uh all of our people that allow us to to be able to beat up butterboy our patrons i was gonna say thanks mom all right cue cue the sad uh alanis morissette music or whatever okay just just <laughs> Put that in your mind. Paint this in your mind now. <laughs> Only you can sponsor a butter boy for as low as one dollar per month to stop the ridicule and abuse that's handed down from Grimm. And the only way you can do that is by going to patreon.com slash gamezilla media and sponsoring your very own butter boy for as low as one dollar per month. With a patronage of five dollars per month, your butter boy can be put into safety programs to be kept away from Grimm's abuse and have running water. It can make all the difference with your patronage that you can start today. And as a special thank you for saving an abused butter boy, the GameZilla podcast and every other show on the GameZilla media network will send you a thank you in the form of a bonus show every single month, only available at patreon.com slash GameZilla media that you cannot hear anywhere else they're only available for you there and guess what it's a new month starting today if you're listening to this as a podcast and that means must or bust is live where grim and the butter boy will tell you which games you should buy and which ones you should not buy in the month of december so get out your credit card and make a difference by sponsoring a butter boy today <laughs> I, 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 oh I man, man. Arms of an angel. <laughs> and copy strike all right it touched me it touched me thank you butter boy for that moving moving patreon push i just know we're gonna get a new patron this week because of that plug if not i get beat so i really hope they do <laughs> that's right it is what it is. Um, <laughs> thank you to thank you to all of our patrons who support us. Uh, we could we couldn't do it without you. So appreciate that. Uh, just a quick reminder: if you're not watching us live on twitch.tv slash Gamezilla Media, you can catch this full length video in the vods, or you can watch it on YouTube, and you also can listen to the podcast in all these great locations that uh, exist, like iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts butthole podcast i don't know whatever network you listen to podcasts we're there hit that five stars give us that heart emoji hit that like button leave us the review do it help us appreciate it love you here's the news no 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 here's Topic the news number one will you pay monthly for dead i Oh, I already blew it. For Butterboy to have a soul. 
No, will you pay monthly for Butterboy's favorite game of all time, Fortnite? Yeah. Get with the boys. A new season of say? Fortnite is almost here. A new season is almost here, and Butterboy is just ecstatic. So, alongside it, though, developer Epic is introducing a monthly subscription called, you guessed it, Butterboy Fanbase. Oh, no, sorry, Fortnite Crew. Fortnite Crew. I get those mixed up all the time. Um, excuse me. Excuse the first. Yeah, excuse, excuse the first group. We can't, we can't announce that yet. We haven't got it through all of our lawyers and everything. But Fortnite Crew will only cost you eleven ninety nine each month. To be clear, my fan base is going to be called the Butter Bitches. So <laughs> the, the trademark. Butter bitches. Okay, okay, yeah, trademark that. I like it. Well, yeah, we'll get that submitted. Eleven ninety nine each month. Fortnite players will get for that twelve dollars each month. They will get one thousand V bucks, which is about ten dollars worth of uh, Fortnite currency, uh, an exclusive character skin and gear, and access to the current season's battle pass. You can get a look at the uh, first character. Kind of looks like this weird, like galaxy suit uh, chick with like uh, a unicorn uh, pickaxe and a, an Earth backpack that's like uh, looks like Earth is exploding from the inside out. So, um, yeah, this is um, this is interesting to me because they're changing. This doesn't mean you can't just go buy the battle pass like you used to be able to. Um, the new offering serves as a higher tier for those looking to spend some cash on Fortnite. Previously, the function was served just by getting the Battle Pass, which was about 950 V-Bucks, again, right around that $10 mark, uh, and would last several months. Fortnite Crew is much more expensive, but also offers more, including the um, exclusivity that Epic says the cosmetics available as part of the subscription service will never be sold or given away to non-crew members. That's right. At least they're doing it right. Or at least they're saying they're going to do it right. The stuff you get in the Fortnite crew, you cannot get you can't get it any other way. So this is kicking off chapter two, season five, which begins uh basically what December 2nd? Just uh, just uh what just in a couple days. So um, the current season is going on. It kicked off back in August. It's our Marvel. It's our Marvel season right now. Galactus is on his way. Galactus is basically here at this point. And we're going to see the big event. And then chapter two, season five will begin. And with that, you can join the Fortnite crew, baby. For $12 a month, you can get in and get some swag. What do you guys yeah. think? What do, what do you think about Fortnite turning itself into legit like a hulu a netflix or whatever just to straight up like hey do you remember the days that you paid money to play a game online we're going back to that but don't worry we're going to give you what you kind of already got in the past with just a little bit extra in my humble opinion they're gonna have to do something they're, they're, they're gonna have to raise the bar they're gonna have to raise the bar in order to get my uh to get my hard hard-earned money for a monthly battle pass description. I mean, th like this month or this season, like got me back into, got me into a uh, Fortnite hardcore where I'm playing on my phone. I'm playing it on, on, on Xbox. I'm playing it. You know, I got my dad hooked to it. My dad has burned the battle. Pass. He has surpassed me in the battle pass. He's been hooked because of this, this season. Um, I, I mean, I have no greater feelings than, than this season. So they're going to have to make something that's going to, Make me feel like I did with this season or better. Like if they now if they rolled out with the Marvel with the Marvel event and rolled out with this pass, I'd be all in. You know, if it lasts for a couple of months, I'd be all in. Take my money. Take my money. But um yeah, I'm gonna have to see what it's gonna what it's gonna offer. So I mean the the kicker here is um I think it's gonna do amazing. I think it's gonna be great. Cause when you think about it, you're paying twelve dollars a month. And you're getting a thousand bucks, sorry, a thousand V bucks. So, and that's each month. That this is how I'm a, this is how I'm looking at it. Every month I'm going to get a thousand V bucks. So I'm going to get ten bucks, 
And then does every month give me a new skin and gear or do I only get it like per season? I think it's every month is how I how I look at this is that every 30 days or whatever, I expect my V bucks, my allowance coming from Epic. okay, my my custom skin and my custom gear. And so when you do that math, I mean, when you when you factor out the thousand V bucks, it's literally a dollar ninety nine we're talking about at this point for a skin, some gear. You can't buy a skin and gear for a dollar ninety nine. I don't care what cheapo skin you're running around on Fortnite; they all cost more than that. So again, the value is there just from that that aspect. I'm I'm dropping seven dollars sometimes on just a pickaxe. You know, like I think I dropped twenty six dollars today because I realized that the ninja skin was back up, and I was like, I'm not gonna miss it for the fourth time. I actually want this skin. I just bought the whole pack, 2,600 V-Bucks. There you go, 26 bucks. So I think um, I think it's going to be a, a smart move by them. And it is interesting because if you think about the Battle Pass, everyone buys it, 950 V-Bucks. And then let's say the season runs three months. Okay, now I'm going to spend $12 which gives me the battle pass. So I look at it that like, I don't have to spend that $10, but instead I'm also going to, you know, potentially hold on to this. Let's just say I hold on to it for a season. Now I've, now I've paid 33, well, more than 33. Um, but yeah, I paid more into it. Right. So it's weird to me because I'm, you're giving me 10 bucks back every time. And that's the part I don't, I don't understand how they're profitable here necessarily, but maybe they're assuming if I give you a thousand V bucks, you're going to spend more than a thousand V bucks, right? It, it's that concept. It's that mindset that, that you always get where, you know, um, why gift cards, gift cards are such a big thing because when I get, when someone gives you a $50 gift card, you go spend a hundred dollars. So like maybe, but at the same time, um, it's not something that that this style hasn't really been done in video games can, like on a successful level that I can think of short of like, I mean, you can talk about subscription services like, wow. What do you think? What do you think, Butterboy? It, it's interesting because I think we are underestimating the amount of, you know, not to sound like an old person, the amount of young people that this is literally the only video game they play. There is a huge fan base of this game that day and night, everything they're logging into, they're playing on a tablet, they're playing on their gaming system, whatever they do, they're playing Fortnite. So if you think about the way people historically have spent money on purchasing other games, there's probably a lot of people that have 12 bucks a month because they're not buying or playing other video games to say, yeah, hey, I'm already going to spend at least $10 in V-Bucks anyway, get the exclusive skin and buy in and just keep rolling and keep getting more of what they're already enjoying and playing. To me, you have to either be the person that every month you know you're going to spend at least $10 on in-game items, or you have to be the person who this is your primary video game you play. If, if you're not, I don't necessarily see the full value in investing $12 every single month into cosmetics unless it's your, your primary passion game. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy in on this again. If you say, Hey, we're offering a similar thing at rocket league again, does my mind change? Maybe still probably not. It's still probably a little, little much for me per month. Um, when it comes to, you know, a game, I'd rather buy another game, but I don't have a primary one game that I play. And I know Fortnite is that for a lot of, a lot of young people. See, I think this is tricky too, because I, I look at it one angle where like, okay, you said younger, younger players. So you, now I'm looking at parents that probably like, how many kids do you think have a V buck allowance, right? Like they're give they're, yeah. they're, they're given so much either money or they're literally given V bucks by their, by their parents every month. And that's their, that's what they're allowed to spend. That's their limit within, within Fortnite. And so now you have this way where you can just pay this bill and it gets credited to the, you know, to your kid's account. And, but the problem starts to connect with there's a skin in the store that I want now. And, it, it, and I have a thousand V bucks, I, but I need 1600 more. Right. 
And you can get into that boat of like, oh, well, you're just going to have to, you're going to have, you know, you, we're going to teach you how to bank up money, fake money, but we're going to teach you how to save money so that you can get what you want. But by the time you save up, that skin might not be available anymore, right? So it's, the, it's I, different than saving up to buy of actual video game that yeah. will be available yeah. for purchase four months down the road when a kid has saved up enough money. That's yeah. not how digital marketplaces and gaming work. That's a good point that I've never considered. Yeah, it's the same thing with Rocket League where we had the Dueling Dragons goal explosion that came through the shop um, a couple weeks ago, and I I missed it. I I, th I thought about buying it. I was like, oh, I don't know. And then it went away, and I was like, oh, uh, crap. I don't know when it's coming back. It could, be, it could be a while, you know, when you think about the fact that they only put, like, what, eight items into the store every couple of days? So, um, I, um... It's going to be weird. I think the idea here is they're giving you this booster of, of points that you're, I mean, you're still paying for them. It's not like they're, they're losing out on these V bucks. You're still paying the money. And then on top, their idea is like, well, this skin costs 2,600. Even if you don't want all the goodies and you just want the skin, it's still, you know, 1,500. We only gave you a thousand. Uh, and then you have to go in and buy just a little bit extra. Well, if I'm not, if I'm going to buy 500 V bucks, I might as well buy twelve hundred because the I I, I get twenty five percent more and they, they play that angle too as far as the bonus V bucks when you spend ten bucks instead of five bucks and blah blah blah. So I mean it's all all a mind just you know it's all business and they have it all figured out. Uh, everybody does it. If you go look at Call of Duty and you look at and you look at um, Call of Duty uh, coin currency, and you go look at Apex and you look at their currency. You look at a lot of these companies that they're they're doing this through these types of games. They all are all are doing something with the whole like, hey, you should buy more of our currency. It's a better bang for your buck. But at the same time, this is in addition to all, all of that. We're we're already used to that. Now, in addition, we can pay 12 bucks, you know, and get and become part of the Fortnite crew. Now, the angle of this that I do like before and, and we get moving on after that is I do like the exclusive gear. I do think that you've built a, you've built this like this elite tier, you know, for your Fortnite fans, your hardcore fans. This is the tier that they want to be a part of because they're going to be able to have gear that no one else has. Now, mind you, millions of people are going to sign up for this. So it's going to seem like this skin is not very rare. But in the grand scheme of it, when you think of how many people play Fortnite versus the versus like, let's say if they're lucky, they get a 10 percent uh, um, buy in on their on their overall user base, 10 percent buy into the Fortnite crew, you know, the Fortnite crew. We're going to see a lot of those skins because there's just a lot of people. But. In the grand scheme of things, it's actually a rare skin at that point, you know, and so as time goes on and people people quit the game or move on or stop paying for Fortnite crew or whatever there is some of these skins will be will turn into that next type of like you know black knight and things like that the, the skins that people like to see and they go oh wow you've played this game a long time you have black knight that's crazy you know so um it's the same thing with rocket league when you see some of these unique unique uh, goal celebrations or or titanium white rare vehicles and things like that, you instantly go, oh, wow, this person's either really good or spent, has spent a lot of money on this game. And so, yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's going to make uh, money for them. I'll probably sign up for it just to check it out and see what it's all about. And But we'll see if I'm going to keep it or not. Miggy, you got any last words on this before we move on? Nope. Nope, I'm good. All right, cool. I, I know Butterboy is going to uh, jump all over this and become a, a new Fortnite main now. Dude, I'm, I'm coming back to Fortnite. Um, I guess I'll, I'll have to install it on the Xbox because right now it's actually, I think, only installed on my PlayStation because I think I removed it from the Switch. So um, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe I guess the PlayStation is going to get a little love after uh, a month of being asleep. All right, uh, topic number two is uh, Xbox head Phil Spencer came out and he did an interview with The Verge, a very long interview that has a lot of cool stuff, but we're just going to focus on a couple pieces of it. So the first piece is he started to talk about console tribalism uh, as one of the worst things in the industry. And we've talked about we have talked about this a lot in over the years, but it was good to hear this coming from one of the heads of the big three, right? 
So Microsoft and Sony are often been considered direct rivals in the game space, competing for players through new consoles and exclusive games, brand loyalty, console wars. Some players, um, you know, being PlayStation fanboys or Xbox fanboys, extreme fans have even escalated their affinity for one over the other into harassment. But Microsoft, Microsoft's real threat isn't Sony or Nintendo or any other company, says Microsoft head of gaming, Phil Spencer. His, his quote was, we're in the entertainment business. The biggest competitor we have uh, for our products and services are the games that we build. Uh, so like I said, speaking to The Verge, Spencer says that he finds toxic brand loyalty to be distasteful and displeases the uh, the idea that companies like Microsoft have to see others fail in order to achieve their goals. That tribalism uh, uh, in the industry is there was anything that would ever drive me, sorry, in the industry, if there was anything that would ever drive me out of the industry, it's that, Spencer says. When a team releases something into the market for the world to tear apart on the internet, it's just such a brave thing for a team to do. I'm never going to vote against any creative team for any product that the team um, or any product team to do poorly because I have a competitive product. It's not in me. I don't actually think it helps us in the long run in this industry. Um, instead, Spencer says it's more important to focus on how the industry is doing well as a whole. He points to advancements like crossplay, where players can jump into the same games with friends on any console as ways the company has worked against these tropes of bitter competition. Um, but there is a core that just really hates other consumer product, Spencer says. Um, and it's so off-putting. It's what to me. It's one of the worst things about our industry. This is a guy that started his internship at Microsoft back in like 1988 and has worked his way all the way up to be the head of Xbox and answer to the CEO of Microsoft. That's his boss. There's no one in between. So to, to listen, and, and you all know that I, I'm, I definitely am a fanboy when it comes to Phil Spencer. Like I really like this guy. Um, for what he has done for the industry, not just Xbox. And this article and, and this statement right here just made me think like we like let's bring it up on the show because this is exactly what everybody needs to realize. It doesn't matter. Play the games you want to play. Have fun because that's the point. Be competitive if that's what you want to be. But understand that like it doesn't matter. Like you could be on PlayStation. You could be on Xbox. You could be on PC. You could be on the switch and, 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 and be a good player and dominate and have fun and, and, and do whatever it is that you want to do with this outlet. And so I'm just so tired of people. Like, I think this, this, this generation, especially, I really kind of removed myself from a lot of conversations about the series X and the PS five, because I didn't want have to worry about finding myself in the middle of these types of dumb arguments that really mean nothing that all they do is just create toxicity and and stupidity and everything around everything else around that so can, like props to phil for for making this statement and i mean i'm gonna let uh i'm gonna let butter boy and and miggy here have a have a few few minutes to say what they want to say I, I think it's kind of the same message across the board but finally someone's stepping up and saying what needs to be said one of my favorite things to do uh, let's say over the course of the last three months as we were ramping up for the release of the new systems is watching youtube videos that are like highlights of f extreme fanboyism on on either side and it's like, oh, goodness, how does your brain work like this? How do you get so worked up to want to just defecate on another brand of a gaming system that's opposite of the one that you are choosing to buy uh, that you haven't ever picked up or played either of them because they're not even out yet? You know, like, like insane, just insane childish behavior. And like, to me, it's really funny, like watching 
people get so worked up and so upset is funny from like an outside observer. I don't want to have that conversation with someone. It would make my brain hurt. I can't, I can't slow my brain out, brain down to work with people like that. It's, I don't have time for it. And that's one of the things I've always liked about this show and about the GameZilla uh, community is I think we've always done a, a fair job giving companies a hard time when they deserve a hard time, but it's not out of fanboyism. You know, like there was a period there where we were honest, like there's nothing going on on the Xbox one there. Like they need to work on exclusives. And, you know, again, they've worked on it. And now obviously I am now an Xbox player. You've been an advocate, a big advocate for Xbox for at least the last two years where that's been your primary platform. But we have love for Sony. Um, you know, I, I, I obviously do a lot of clowning on, on PC gaming, but I don't really care where people play games. I obviously I'm going to give you a hard time about having a $3,000 computer and being so proud of it. Like, cause yeah, cause okay. Of course your $3,000 computer is better than a game system. You know what I mean? Like, but that's like my personality. And of course I'm just clowning around. I don't care. I just want people to have fun and play games. Cause at the end of the day, video games are a child's toy. <laughs> they're they're fun. They're supposed to bring joy to your life and it doesn't matter where you play them as long as you're having fun. So it's nice to hear Phil say this. And when I think about the tribalism or the the rooting for a company or a developer rooting for someone to fail. I remember in the late 90s I had a, a friend who swore up and down that the Sega Saturn was the greatest video game system ever and everything else was garbage, like hardcore. If it's not the Saturn, it's garbage. <laughs> and dude, I was like, yeah, man, Saturn's cool. Like even as a kid, I'm like, yeah, dude, Saturn's cool. Like it's whatever. And dude, I remember seeing him the week he found out the Saturn was dead. And he's like, Hey man, Saturn, like it's dead, man. I was like, I was like, yeah, dude, it's a bummer. He's like, how'd that happen? It's, it's the best thing ever. Like, I don't know, man, but watching him break over a company's failure, I don't want to see anyone invest hundreds of dollars into enjoying a platform to have it go under in an untimely way. That's what some people want. Some people want to see the opposite platform of what they play on to crash and burn and have no games come out for it and no one buy it and it die off. And guess what? If you think having one primary leader in the gaming industry is good for the gaming industry, it's not competition, no, it's not. competition, preferably friendly competition breeds innovation. Each one of these companies needs to continue to push and give us reasons to buy their systems and buy their games and invest in their platforms. And if one of those companies goes away and another company doesn't come up to fill that void, if there's not competition, you're going to have laziness. You're going to see what we have seen out of successful developers. You've seen Sony get lazy leading into the PlayStation three. Guess what? Sony got lazy. Guess what happened to Microsoft at the end of the 360 era? They got lazy and it caused changes in power. And if one company goes completely under, you're only going to get laziness out of the remaining company. Yeah. No, I mean, I agree. I think, I think you can even argue Sega when Sega decided to finally quit hardware and go third party, we watched a shift. It just so happened that that shift also was during a time where Microsoft was going to step into the game. PlayStation obviously was, you know, um, blowing up. And Nintendo was already established, so we still kind of had a, a, a healthy ecosystem. But, but yeah, I mean, you're right. Competition drives innovation, and if you don't have that, then you're going to get something that's just boring and, and bland. A great example that I always like to point out is the early '90s. Okay, I'm dating myself as far as my age, but the early '90s of vehicles were all trash when um. it came to American vehicles. We all, all, all American companies were like, oh, we're all just going to put out this ugly ass box that has a ton of problems and everyone's going to buy it. And then, you know what happened? All of a sudden people started buying Toyota, Honda and started going with, with foreign companies. And these American companies all of a sudden realized, oh, oh, we can't just cash it in. And they started actually starting to develop better, better quality products. And anybody that wants to fight me over this, like, come on, man, a Ford Tempo. OK, a Ford Tempo is an example of I don't give a fuck what I'm putting out there. You're going to give me your money anyways. And then people started people stop giving me money and I go, oh, 
oh, I didn't mean that. Hold on. Let me go make something cool, actually. Like, if you've ridden in a tempo and you're still with us, we're blessed. Yeah. We're blessed that yeah. you survived. Yeah. So, but I mean, if you think early nineties of, of, of uh, vehicle manufacturing, that is an example of, 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 of an industry that didn't feel a lot of competition. And then all of a sudden the foreign competition came in, kicked their ass and it changed everything. So without that, who knows what would have happened? Um, Miggy, what do you, what do you think though? Uh, what are your thoughts on, on this statement and, and the concept of, uh, console wars I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you guys i mean you know except for the for for the butter boy comment about a game being a child's toy but um like the whole it is video games are children's toys I, we uh, love them but they are they are let's be honest about it i think they've evolved a little bit beyond that but i mean that's what they were created for originally yeah yeah they've evolved I mean, I wouldn't want to give Grant the thought to my child, but um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> there is, in my in my opinion, the console wars are dead. It's just fanboys that are that keep trying to revive it, trying to bring it back up. I mean, console wars died when you know when you know uh, Genesis does what Nintendo. You know that just it, it's died. It's dead. And the people, the instant people realize that. You know, it's pointless to fight for a company that doesn't care about you. They only cares about your wallet. You know, you have no stock or no interest, you know, in, in that company. I mean, hey, we can all learn to be better. I mean, like you guys said, uh, play play with what you what you want. Have fun. If you're PC, go for PC. If you're Nintendo, play Nintendo. If you if you only Xbox, get Xbox. But, you know, if you want to be like us that are, you know, gamers and, and, and dive into all ecosystem, each one of the ecosystems and find something enjoyable in each part, then, hey, that's cool. I mean, I, I back, I, I constantly trying to, you know, get dragged into these conversations of what do you think is better, the Xbox or the PlayStation? I said, like, well, we have to, you know, I look at the numbers and, you know, whichever company makes the, makes the most, you know, I mean, that would be proven the better, but, you know, don't ask which the better experience. It depends on what you, what you want, what are you looking for? And, you know, you have to, you know, basically take out the charts and the, uh, and the graphs and all that stuff and tell you, you know, this is what this console has and this is what this console has. So, you know, you know, give it up people, you know, go with what you, what you want. And, uh, if you want to, if you want to sit down and have, a, have an educated, uh, you know, discussion with us about, um, which one might be the right one for you, join us in the discord and, you know, we'll, we'll tell you what each system has to offer, you know, and, and yeah. lead you down the right path. Yeah. And that, that brings me to the next, the next piece of this is keep it moving on here is that, uh, Phil Spencer also in that same article praised PlayStation for their controller for the PS five dual sense controller. So uh, Xbox boss Phil Spencer is here with ample praise for the PlayStation 5's DualSense controller. Uh, Spencer spoke highly of the Sony's ability to integrate haptic feedback into a controller, making video gaming a lot more realistic and even more addictive. For, for example, if you're playing Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War with a DualSense controller, you can quite physically experience your virtual heartbeat shake and slow down on low health. So... His his comment was, I applaud what they did to the controller. I think for all of us in the industry, we should learn from each other and the innovation that we all push, whether it's distribution of business model like Game Pass or controller tech or the Wii back in the day, which clearly had an impact on us when we went off and did Connect and Sony did the move. Uh, it is Sony's push to break rules and take risks that deserves applause, Spencer said. I think all of that innovation is something that we should all be looking at and learning and growing and saying, OK, what's really going to break out and become a common part of a platform that developers and players are going to look for? Or what is more vertical around a specific scenario on a specific piece of hardware? We're trying to be eyes open on all of that. DualSense breaks tradition, right? Like it, it broke the DualShock tradition, and and initially it shook us all. And I didn't, we didn't, I didn't like the name change. I didn't like that that they were that they were um, toting this whole this new evolution of controller. And then I used it, and I was like, wow, this is actually really cool. And I and everybody I know that is that has held a DualSense and tried it said this is neat. 
it sure it it could it still could end up being a gimmick that that just doesn't pan out. But I think I don't I think at this point some of it will pan out. Maybe not all of it. We'll see. But bottom line is is that just like Butterboy said is that a healthy competition and innovation across companies is important because when Sony decides to take that gamble and do something, Phil is paying attention at Microsoft. They're not over there saying, oh, the dual sense is trash. You don't need that. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Cause we have had companies do that. I'm not going to point fingers, but we have had companies that say, uh, online gaming is not as a fad and it's not going to be a thing. We're not worried about it. I think they we could all know be right. They could still be right. <laughs> so, but, but at the same time, Nintendo's ha- never wrong. Having a face. I didn't, I said, I'm not going to say any names. I'm not calling out anybody. I'll um, name names. I ain't scared. <laughs> but, but having, having a company come out, obviously they've congratulated each other. We've seen a lot of, you know, a lot of support uh, as they both launched their new systems, but to have them come out and actually know, recognize the big change that Sony made, when two boxes, when you tear these boxes apart, it's like, okay, they both have an AMD chip. They both have this type of RAM. They both have an AMD, you know, um, RDNA 2.0 graphics and all. Like, like there's so many things that are similar. The, but the thing that, that is different for PlayStation is the controller, where Sony, where, where, sorry, where Microsoft decided that they weren't going to revolutionize the controller what what's what microsoft is doing right now is they're paying attention to sony because their their next controller very well could have that type of tech in there what i and, and i and i would i would praise it i would say you pay attention to the industry you've noticed that the fans love it you want to integrate it into your ecosystem good idea but what the the world that we just got done talking about is is that the second that somebody copies or or, or recognizes the fact that the Wii was very successful so the Kinect came out and the Move came out and things like that. The problem you have is you have all these people are like, yeah, see, Sony's better and all Microsoft did was copy them. And it's like that's business sometimes. Sometimes you have to recognize that someone beat you to the punch, but that you can also still throw a punch similar to them. So why not? Because you still have people to play on your system, so why not give them the option of having that technology? So I mean, if V, if if the PlayStation VR would have took off and sold hot, I mean, sold hotcakes. I mean, just would change the VR just p- world. You don't think right now that we'd be understanding how Halo lens or you know Microsoft Halo lens or not Halo, um, Hololens oh. and um, or other technology would have been more integrated in the gaming scene. I guarantee you it would have. The pro- the fact of the matter is they looked at it and they go whoo. One percent and one one to two percent, and you know, jump. Uh, yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna dump resources into that. So that is smart, and that's what and that's what all these three companies are doing, and that's what this industry is, is trying to do. And and the fan base needs to understand it. You need to understand this is good. You know, like everyone, I remember was selling cell phones back in the day, and making fun of uh, was it Carosia or what the hell was that company called? I have it no was idea. It, it was a it was a company that we always looked at as like a junk phone company. But the problem, but the thing about them was they were they would push tech first because they were a smaller company because they want because because the the concept of something new on their phone first might make you buy their phone be- over over a standard phone, right? And. It's realizing things like that. It's realizing that Sony was the little guy, but that but was pushing tech, was pushing things on a whole nother level that was forcing Nintendo to react. The little guy was pushing around the big guy. Uh, back in, in my camera days, when I was selling high end cameras, it was it, it was little Nokia, or not Nokia, sorry, little Nikon versus gigantic Canon, right? And you would see Nikon do some crazy things and you would see Canon react. And then you'd see it flip around where Canon would try something and Nikon would react. That's what we want to see. That's a healthy industry. And all this toxicity that comes from it is just stupid. You're all just dumb. Just play your games. And and again, good job, Phil. Good job, Microsoft, for coming through and, and having and, and saying these things because it's true. Sony has done a great job with the dual sense. I'll give it to I'll give it to it hands down now. 
it's to the point where I want to play games on Xbox, but every time I think about buying a game, I go, well, what's going to be special about the DualSense that maybe I buy it on the PS5 instead? I do think about that now, which is something I never thought I would even worry about. So. <clears throat> Anything you guys want to add about the controller praise from uh, from Phil? Are you guys good? Giving credit where credit's due. Thanks, Phil. Stay classy, Phil. I like that. <laughs> All right, we're going to move into our last topic, guys. Last topic is we're getting ready for it. We're we're only we're only like 10 days away. Cyberpunk 2077 is is on its way December 10th, but we did find out some additional details about the DLC and everything uh in a quarterly meeting that was held. So um an exceedingly long wait elongated by numerous delays, CD Project Red's ambitious RPG is set to launch on December 10th. While we're busy getting ready for the first playthrough, uh, the Polish developer has plans to reveal more details about the game's upcoming DLC. This DLC was supposed to be announced uh, before the game came out, but because of the delays and everything, their initial plan has changed, and now they want to hold that information off until sharing after the launch. So we will find it about DLC after the game comes out, which is fine. We have a giant game to play before we worry about DLC. So that's not a big that's not that big of a deal. Um it was interesting to read on though that the multiplayer mode was mentioned uh which is scheduled to arrive in 2022. Oh. <laughs> and that's, we'll find uh, that's a long ways away. <laughs> and we'll find out more about it in quarter 1 of 2021 as far as the multiplayer. The thing to to bring in about that that continued to be expressed was the fact that they are looking at the multiplayer mode as a standalone project. Um, we don't like to call it a mode, actually. They like to call it a separate, dedicated production uh, that's a big production and a standalone product that will, though, be integrated into the game. It's not like you're buying two. You're going to have to buy two games. Um, the multiplayer part of the game will be connected to the single player release, but will operate individually uh, with a separate team working to provide ongoing content for the multiplayer mode. Um, the multiplayer mode started as a concept exploration that later entered into full development and has just been growing and growing ever since. So, yeah, I mean, we, and, that, and that's all we know. Um, you know, they, they basically said, we doubt you'll see multiplayer in 2021. So this is interesting because normally I I think I would hate this. Normally I'd be very anti where you have a game and then a year later you add on to it because I feel like player base issues, um, you're like it doesn't work. But I think this type of game and this type of hype around as long as long as this game comes out as far as the single player concept of side of it comes out and does what it's supposed to do and is CG Project Red's next big hit and blah blah blah, then then there's no concern at all because you people are going to play it for years and years and years to come. It's as similar as Witcher 3. I mean, how many times, how many people do we know that's picked up Witcher 3 just a few months ago compared to when it launched, compared to playing it for the fourth, you know, their fourth playthrough? Like, it, you just, it's just that typical, similar to my wife and how she plays Skyrim 17,000 times. So, it, I mean, I don't have that concern. And I think because they're developing it in, in, a, con in a mindset of it's its own thing, it could be that kind of like that nice thing where you have a game, it's super hot, it goes through a year, wins game of the year at the end of the year, let's just say, blah, blah, blah. And then multiplayer drops a year later when the game's cooled off a bit, just to reignite the fire. Now now what correct me think? if I'm correct me if I'm wrong on this. This reminds me of another game that I think the multiplayer dropped a while after the game came out. And now it would be hard to argue that it's not one of the most successful multiplayer games of all time. GTA five didn't launch with GTA online, right? That came after because you could have a similar, yeah, yeah, yeah. you could have a similar thing here. Cyberpunk multiplayer could, could come into effect and have a very similar life, very long, successful life, similar to GTA online. 
that's that's what's sparking in my head where i th- so I, th- I think we have seen a game sort of set a precedent to how success can exist by building a player base over a, a period of time launching the multiplayer and then having that be its its own runaway success yeah you're right i mean we gta and then gta online red dead and then red dead online both rockstar products both separated I mean, and yes, that we don't know for sure, but it could be a very similar um, business model, business uh, decision. But and yeah, obviously, we've seen that work, especially for GTA. We've seen that work to be to turn into one of the most successful revenue generating games of all time. So um, and lifespan of that game extended beyond anything I think they ever originally thought was even possible. So, yeah, I mean. If they're going down that road and they do it right, yeah, that would be super smart. And that we also don't know that comes back to what is cyberpunk multiplayer, right? What is it? No idea. We're just, like, you know, when when I think multiplayer, like, is it is it uh, like a competitive shooter? Is it is it co op? Is it are we, are we literally going to get cyberpunk in an, in uh, a way where we can play it like Destiny? You know, things like that that could because I'll tell you what that would excite the hell out of me. So. Uh, and I'd go play through a single player and then that would launch and I'd be like, OK, butter boy, Miggy, like, let's do this. You know, so um, it's a very good point. It's a very good point. Miggy, what do you got? I am, oh, I am extremely excited to see what um, what this multiplayer is going to be. So, um, yeah, I'm sitting there with bated breath and uh, and and um, and uh, cyberpunk, I trust. Would you be any more excited, though? Like, I mean, you sound like you're about to just explode with excitement. I, I, I am. the The dial has broken, you know, and it go and it breaks and reaches the top and it breaks, goes back down to zero. I'm that excited. I'm that excited. I want you. I want you to get right up. <laughs> I want you to get right up into the mic right now and tell me how excited you are for Cyberpunk 2077 to come out in ten days. Ten days. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I I have pre-purchased the game. I I have pre-bought the game. It is uh I'm, I'm physical. It will be here. It will be here on that Friday. I have taken the day off of work. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so this is um I think some people were giving it like negative. They they're being a little bit negative about it about the like the the big gap for multiplayer. And I'm like, first of all. If I can sink 175 hours into a single playthrough of this game, I know some people are going to burn through this game. I get it. Some people are going to get in there and they are just going to annihilate this game. And then they'll go move on to other things. And when multiplayer comes out, they may come revisit it. They may not. But there are people like me that I played too many games that the that the 100 hours that I put into this game or the 150 hours that I put into this game is going to take probably a year. So by the time I'm really getting to the end and I'm like, well, you know, I'm going to think maybe I'm, I'm going to just shelf this and, and kind of uh, see what else is out there. Multiplayer will drop, you know, and we'll see what that is. Now, again, we can get excited about multiplayer by, by first quarter, first quarter of 2021. So, I mean, we're going to start being fed what this is going to be all about. So as we start to hopefully fall in love with this game, then they're going to give us these breadcrumbs to a, to to the end goal of yes. Now you like this? Here is Cyberpunk Online, and it is, and and that's I think I think I think Butterboy nailed it. Is that if they do that, if they create this amazing world with these amazing characters and just a beautiful game, and then they go now we're going to make it open world, and we're going to let you we're going to let you do the thing similar to GTA Online. I would be like. I, I would be very excited if it turns out just to be like a okay, it's a four v four, just uh, you know, similar to Gears of War multiplayer. That's what it is. I'd be like, why did that take you? Why did you need an additional year for that if you've been <laughs> developing it? You know, so like to me, it, it screams to me that I would agree with Butterboy that it, it is something more. It is, it is going to be. And CD Projekt Red seems to always want to be that company right now that goes for, you know, the sky is the limit they go for it all so i think this is they are trying to push something 
that is going to get us all really excited. And I think in quarter one, we'll get a tease. Maybe at E3, we'll get a, uh, we'll get a big reveal. And then by the time that comes around, we'll be sitting at a six month window itching for this, for this, uh, you know, this product to drop and, and be added to the cyberpunk franchise. Anyways, I'm excited. I got Cyberpunk 2077 sitting on my Series X right now. Just the icon just just teasing me. I've had it since I had my Cyberpunk Xbox One X sitting there teasing me. So I'm I've been ready. And uh as much uh as much I don't want to say hate, but as much um I've criti- I've critiqued this game and, and given it positive negative feelings on it throughout this whole year. Uh, I am still very excited to get my hands on it and get going. So uh, we'll see. We'll see in just over a week, you know, 10 days away. And just fingers crossed we don't get some weird last minute delay. <laughs> True. I think there'd be I, riots. There'd be act. I mean, riots are common now, but there'd be riots. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah I, if there was another delay, oh, man, I, I thought of imagine. I thought about it as soon as I said I took the day off for of work, so it's like it's already canceled, and I, I apologize. I should have I should have held on to that till the actual day of. Yeah, well, eh. it is what it is, but uh, I'm very excited. That was our attack on the news for these topics and much more. Please visit the Discord. Um, you can join join up if you're watching us live on Twitch. You're gonna get the link in the chat. If you are listening to this on any other outlet, just head on over to gameslowmedia.com, click on that community tab, and join the Discord today. Talk with gamers from around the world and hang out with one of the best communities out there. Um, and let's go talk about cyberpunk. Let's talk about uh, the the gaming industry and and tribalism and and toxicity and how we need to how we need to just play video games and have fun. Now crossplay is helping us do that. Um, and then of course, are you going to pay money? Are you going to pay a monthly subscription for Fortnite? I'm just curious. How many of you that watch this show, listen to this show, uh, plan on joining the Fortnite crew? Let me know in the Discord. Name's kind of lame. I didn't mention that earlier. Fortnite crew, kind of lame. Yeah, uh, I'm not a, I'm not in love with it for sure. But I need to, you I need know, to, I need to get a raise in my allowance now. <laughs> All right. Well, Miggy, if you if you do some extra chores, you know, maybe maybe you'll you'll get an extra couple dollars in your pocket. Hold on, hold on, Ma. <laughs> do the dishes, <laughs> Miggy. I need twenty money, bucks. dollars. I need twelve. I need twenty dollars. <laughs> Fortnite. Ooh, you see, he's milking it. He's getting that extra eight bucks. You see, it's already <laughs> happening. I don't need I twelve. To... I need twenty. Um, my wa- my wife caught me in the Xbox shop looking at games, and I was like, "Yeah, I think we're gonna download this game." She's like, "Not with a dirty toilet upstairs, you're not." And I ran upstairs and took care of that. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom, my mom played that same game all the time. No, but mine was uh, my wife in this week. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I said, my mom played that same game with me when I was a kid. Oak this one don't play. Or Oak this one don't play. That's right. Um, all right, let's get into it. Uh, we got our gaming moments of the week, our Zilla update. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and just get mine out of the way. It, it's a two-parter. Um, first one's real quick. I hit platinum in ones Ooh. in Rocket League. Ooh, Ooh you, you're a real one. First off, I didn't know you were out there going in on ones like that. That's it, that's some real stuff right it's there. Real stuff. You don't have anybody helping you. You got to do it all yourself. So here's the deal. I did my one like my ones, uh, my prelims or whatever uh, a while ago, and I got into gold, and I was like, okay. I did the twos and I did my threes and then like you know and then I practiced a bunch and I was like I think I'm better like I'm pretty sure I've gotten better. There's only one way to find out. I should go back and play ones and see if I can climb. And so I went back in ones and I went on like an eight game winning streak. I mean like big people forfeiting and I'm like I'm sitting here I'm like okay. So I got the plat uh, plat one division two. I stopped for now and I'm like well. I cli- I officially can call myself a platinum player because I did. There's no way to get carried in once, right? Sure. I was already in platinum on twos. I'm in platinum on threes. I wanted platinum on ones to prove that like I could su- I could carry myself within within platinum. So then um, I wanted to finish my seasonals and get ready for the season to end and get my seasonal reward or whatever it is. So I went into extra modes. 
And I got Diamond and Rumble, baby. Let's yeah. go. Oh, yeah, oh, the Diamond yeah. Rumble Club. Yeah, Diamond 2 and Rumble. And uh, we the real ones hang out in there. Rumble. Uh, the funny thing is, as you get better at the game, you can go you go into Rumble, and Rumble's less chaos because, because you have mechanics built to do certain things in the game. You start to be able to do more with those tools they give you. Yeah. So like the one thing I always I always think of that I had some really good goals on would be like the plunger, right? The plunger move once you could fly in the air and then and then like fly yourself down towards the goal can do some crazy things to the ball and, that I never could do before that uh, I found enjoyable. Same with like spikes. Spikes you can do some fun stuff with once you're able to do aerial tricks. So I had a lot of fun. Um, got to diamond there and then I went and got uh, platinum in snow day. Goodness, what is wrong with you? Why why are you going this hard in the extra modes? Because I had to play like 50 rounds of extra modes and stuff to get my seasonal oh, stuff stage seasonal, yeah. four. So yeah. that's yeah, that's the only reason I even went to, went there and then I ended up having a lot of fun to the point where I went and started to play drop shot and actually was having fun because I can do stuff in the air now. So I can yeah. actually get up in the air and spike the ball down and be like, wow, this mode actually has a purpose now because I can actually do something. So I had a lot of fun with it. It was good. Um, now I'm going to work towards diamond. I got to get all my rewards up. So at least get my platinum rewards. But, um, the, uh, the other piece to my, to my gaming moments of the week though, was we did our first F Saturday. We did our first ever call of duty Warzone custom lobbies. So in this last patch, you could build your own lobby and only lo and, and then only bring in the people that you invite into a Warzone match. So myself, Snow Foxy, and Orange Croc all pooled our communities together, and we built on Saturday afternoon. We built a 40, 50 person lobby and played Warzone with our friends uh, for about five hours, Perfect. and it was it was awesome. And it was uh, we played Royale, uh, Mini Royale, so it was a smaller one and a lot quicker. And it just was a, it was a blast. I had uh, I had two wins. The last game of the of the day was Snow, myself, and Migra, and we finished it off with a win. So that felt great. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. So we'll be doing that again. Um, so stay tuned. We'll be we'll be planning that out more. And we've already had other people reach out to us with interest to uh, to join. So we might as we build awareness around this uh, one to two times a month event we uh we might start moving to a full-blown just normal uh war zone royale where we uh we just do the full map what about you butter boy what you got well I, I got two things to think of this week one the continued friendship slash abuse rolls from grim to eye as the other day he texts me and says you know, already got you the new Xbox, but uh, Merry Early Christmas and just hits me with a code. The reason I say friendship slash abuse is I throw that code into my Xbox and it's Cuphead, uh, a game I've always wanted to put time into. I've you know played a little bit with, with Grim and a little bit with another friend, um, but not enough to really like learn the game. And uh, we also know Cuphead's a famously hard and frustrating game, but uh, I dove right into it. Uh, I got off the first island, so I think I'm like maybe 30% of the way through the game roughly. Uh, just, you know, love the art style, having fun with the game, and enjoying the challenge of learning the patterns and learning the bosses. It's been fun so far, uh, so hopefully we'll be able to play that together soon. A little co-op action. And yeah. my, other, my other gaming highlight of the week is the... Butter Boy, Butter Beast, continuing to roll on with beating games. Ori in the Blind Forest in the books. Games done. Games beat. Um, and I guess to just just sort of tie up my thought on uh, Ori. I, I think Ori is the perfect culmination of where the genre of Metroidvania games should be over the last four or five years when or we came out like four years ago or whatever because what you have is you have a metroidvania style game a, a, a genre that's existed what 94 you know i guess you really want to go back to the original metroid you know so back into the 80s but what ori blends into that game is it is it gives you the what i call challenge platforming or modern platforming of a super meat boy 
of a Celeste. Uh, those type of games where it's about pinpoint accuracy, uh, quickly time jumps, opposed to more of the traditional platformers, a Mario, a Sonic, a Rayman, that sort of thing. Uh, so the per precision platforming mixed with the Metroidvania and the powering up, um, I thought bringing those two styles together and executing them so well in a beautiful game with a great story that's just pure fun. Every challenge was fun to learn to overcome. Uh, it, it really is one of the, the best of the genre to ever be made. And I look forward to playing Will the Wisps. I just wanted to wait a couple weeks really and let being the first game sink in and enjoy that before I move on to the sequel. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, it's the the two combined are one are one of my favorite franchises of all time, and being Super Metroid being my favorite game of all time, it just uh, I always credit Ori into being the game that actually pulled me back into the genre and got me playing uh, Metroidvania games again. So um, I'm excited for you to finish number two so we can talk. But uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the first one. Yep, Miggy, what do you got? Game and moment of the week. Uh, well, I uh, took a brief pause, Rooney, from um, The Last of Us Two, and uh, got my uh, my Switch. So I've been uh, been playing that, getting acclimated to it, and uh, been grinding it out on Smash Brothers, and uh, been having a lot of fun. And first order of business, as soon as I cracked open said game, I um, I had to lick it. Had to lick it. Oh and God. And the, let me tell you something, the taste, the taste lingers. Like it doesn't, you don't just lick it and it goes as soon as you're done licking. No, it like you, you lick it and it's like, it's like slap your tongue says no. And then you think about what you've done and it lingers on your tongue for about a good minute. So you, so you remember and you never want to lick that cartridge again. I was curious and I'll never get curious. I mean, we again. all did it. I did. I did. I don't know if that I did it actually. Sorry. Oh, I did it again. I don't know if Butterboy did it, but uh, I mean, mine was. I think I licked one. I yeah, think I, I, think, one. I think we. Yeah, at the beginning, we uh, we all did. So, but yeah, I mean, it uh, it is a not a great taste. Not no, a, not it a great is not. experience. No. Which I mean, I guess I guess in theory, good job. You, you did what you wanted to do. <laughs> I just always found it hilarious that they did this to stop from kids putting the cartridge in their mouth and then, which led to adults all licking the cartridges. <laughs> so there you go. We're not that far removed from the Tide Ooh. Pod eating generation. <laughs> so we are their elder statesmen. Let's How not forget. How many Nintendo Switch cartridges does it take before you die? Yeah. We are the <laughs> jackass generation. If someone's like, this tastes bad, don't do it. We're like, yeah, but what if I did it? <laughs> and can sucking on it kill you? Just like pop two cartridges in your mouth and just go for it. Man, I don't want to. I, I don't want anyone to find that out. Honestly, so let's just not, not let's not promote that. Let's just keep it, keep it, keep it chill. Um, but yeah, I'm all. I'm glad to hear that you uh you've been able to enjoy your Switch. Yeah, yeah. congratulations. Welcome yep. to the Switch family. Next game is Animal Crossing, and I plan on losing my life to that. Yeah, we'll that's usually what happens. At least for a while there. That Tom Save Nook, you, you better pay up, otherwise Tom yeah. Nook shakes you down. That's right. He, Tom Nook don't play. He don't. He sent his kids <laughs> after you, too. Oh, yeah. no. Super Lars in the chat saying, saying, uh, how many Switch cartridges can you fit in your mouth at once? I'm going to try now. Oh, no. Don't all right. Do RIP Super Lars. All right. Good having you around, man. You're going to need a new you. You. it. You're going to need you a new are, mod. You were one of the good ones. See ya. Super Lars says, sometimes I influence the podcast, sometimes the <laughs> podcast influences me. Live by the sword, die by the sword. That's how it goes here on the podcast. <laughs> oh, God. Johnny Riot, let's chew on sweet cartridges and shopping cart joust. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when down. I was in community yeah. college, I legit looked out a window and saw two guys bike jousting in the courtyard. And I was like, this is a, this is a really good time to be alive right now. See, <laughs> see two grown men bike jousting on a college man, campus. Man. Community well, college. They were probably drunk. That's our gaming moment of the week there. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for sharing. And if you want to, uh, for everybody listening, if you want to share your gaming moments of the week or your thoughts on the news topics or any stuff, anything that's been going on this episode, you want to join the discord. So hop on over to the discord. Uh, if you're, if you're watching us on Twitch, the link will be in the chat. If you are listening to us anywhere else, you can just go to gameslomedia.com 
go to the community tab, click that Discord button, and you're in. So uh, let's keep the conversations going in the GameZilla uh, podcast channel or or any of, the, any of the other channels that you feel the topic you want to discuss uh, fits. So that wraps things up. We're gonna let we're gonna let Butterboy here remind us one more time of all of our great other podcasts, and you might as well thank our patrons because without it, I mean, without them, you wouldn't even be Butterboy right now. That's true. I would, in fact, be an unbuttered piece of toast falling from the counter to a dirty floor to be devoured by mice if I was not a buttered boy. Let me tell you about the other great shows available at GameZillaMedia.com, like the last action podcast, all things action movies. Go back, listen to the shows from October because yours truly invaded their feed for almost the entire month. And uh, let me tell you, they, they dropped a show earlier today, Highlander, dope theme song, dope movies, people getting decapitated, highly recommend. Um, Noiseland Arcade, that's our Simpsons show. Noobs and Dragons, it's our tabletop storytelling podcast, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, it's a really fun time. Go back, start episode one. They're on season two right now, so if you want, you can start episode one, season two, uh, and just enjoy the story and enjoy the fun to be had. And, of course, Legend of Retro, that's where uh, our friends go deep dive into a retro game every single week. It's a different game. Uh, they give you some history, their personal memories and experiences with it. It's a really good time. You'll love The Legend of Retro if you are a fan of retro gaming. And you can listen to all those shows the same places you can listen to the GameZilla podcast and, of course, GameZillaMedia.com. Again, quick thank you to all of our patrons. We would not be doing the show right now for you. Available twitch.tv slash GameZillaMedia. We wouldn't be live if it were not for the support of our patrons. So thank you so much to everyone who gives to us financially every single month so we can continue to put out this show for you. Uh, even throughout the entirety of the pandemic, us three dudes have been linking up online and recording a show for you. And it's because of our patrons. We want to continue to uh, give back to the people that give to us. So thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. We, uh, sorry, I had a, I have a visitor that just jumped, jumped in the room here. Uh, but yeah, thank you, our patrons, and guys, thank you for everybody that's been listening to all the shows, fee- giving us feedback on everything, and there's so many of you that have joined the Discord and, and shared uh, how much these podcasts help you, um, you know, keeping you keeping you awake uh, on the road or helping you uh, during this pandemic and, and all sorts of other stuff. We really appreciate hearing all of that. It makes us it makes our day. So thank you. Um, this is. This has been episode 338 of the Games Old Podcast. And um, just remember, we are your elite free DLC for all your gaming news. And until next time, game on. Game on. Game on.